Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Vermont House Committee on Commerce and Economic Development. Uh, it is Tuesday, March 29th at 3.30. Um, we have with us uh, Patrick Leduc from VZAC, and he has uh, some adult CT, uh, adult students who, uh, who have uh, uh, gracious, graciously agreed to come and chat with us today. And uh, we certainly appreciate your time, you taking the time to, to talk with us. Um, we have uh, a real interest in workforce, um, and especially so this year with all the issues that are going on in the, in the workforce, not just within Vermont, but within the country as well. And so um, I was not able to join the Zoom meeting that, that you had a couple of weeks ago, but uh, we want to make sure that that we asked uh, some of you to come in and, and chat with us. And so uh, welcome. And Patrick, if you would like to tee it all up, we'd be grateful. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you for having our students in. Obviously, at VZAC, we're, we're very focused on trying to, you know, work on the systems across the state in every capacity to, to make it smoother for our students. Um, and while we bring lots of his experience and expertise, it's, there's nothing like talking to the actual students directly to find out what their experience is like. So we've held two panels, uh, as you know, one with high school seniors and one with adults that were either going back to school or going to school for the first time uh, a little bit later in life. Uh, those two constituents are constituents that we feel very passionately about helping and supporting. And um, we had a conversation with this group uh, of about 10, four of them with us today. Uh, around how did they make their career choices and how are they navigating the education to get into those career choices. So I'll, I'll key it up with one question that is kind of similar to what we talked about in our panel and then we can just kind of see where their conversation goes. Uh, Chair Marcotte, I'll obviously take your lead on how you'd like to go. So the first question that I would pose to, to this group of four and then we can just see where it goes is, you know, what is your, you know, introduce yourself, uh, talk a little bit about what your career path is right now and how you made that choice and how the education is going for that for you right now. So any one of you can start. Um, I, I'll go first. Um, I'm Robert Bell. i from Lowell, Vermont. Um, I just had my 33rd birthday on the 25th of this month. So um, I decided to go back to college last year at CCD. Um, when I left my job at JP Morgan in South Burlington, Vermont, um, because I decided like I needed a, a change, a switch in my career. Um, and I also needed something I can do while I stay at home and help my disabled wife. So going back to CCD um, online learning made a lot of sense to me. Um, and especially, um, I'm currently in the information technology associate's degree, um, which um, there's a lot of jobs out there that you can work from home as well. So again, it made a lot of sense for me to pursue this career. Um, and that's, that's where I am today. Hi, I'll go next. I'm Amber, a lawyer, and I went for, in the beginning, phlebotomy and medical assisting, and it wasn't, wasn't exactly the right fit at the time, and I did get funding from um, BFA and my VSAC grants. And I was so grateful for that because that was one of the highest sought out careers at the time. I then learned about massage school and I also did that with some of a grant that I had. And that was amazing. I now have a four year career in massage. And right now I want to finish with an accounting bookkeeping certification so that I can um, <laughs> do well in my business and know the ins and outs. And mm -hmm. I really feel it's gonna bring a strong background and I hope I can provide for my family in these really, really trying times now online. Well, 
I think we're really glad to hear that. Um, during the pandemic, um, you know, we provided, the state provided a lot of money to help businesses. And one of the issues I think that came up for a, a lot of the small, really small businesses was that they weren't using any accounting, um, didn't have any accounting um, knowledge at all. And we're kind of doing things on the back of napkins and things like that, not, not being able to use QuickBooks and not being able to provide the information that, that the state needed to provide the, the grants. So it's I'm really happy to hear that you're, you're looking to get that financial knowledge. And, oops, sorry. Um, and that's now one of the highest sought out careers. And that's another reason I, I found that. Yep. Great. Samantha or Brittany? There you go, Samantha. I'm Samantha Rivers. Um, I'm a single mom of three. Um, I always worked in the medical field. I was an LNA for years. Um, I actually got into that field because I had a grandfather that was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. So I kind of got into that to take care of him. And then after I lost him, my heart just wasn't in it. You know, every patient I saw, kind of remind me of him and so I was like okay I need a little different um path as far as you know so I had a number of different jobs and then I'm not one to sit still and be behind a desk so I wanted a job that was more hands-on um so last year I took some CPT courses and got my certification as a certified production technician in um, safety, quality, and measurement. And I now am a quality control inspector for a company in Castleton, Vermont called CAM Development. We make um, parts and components for firearms and explosives for the military. Oh. Um, and um, I'm actually now furthering I'm doing some schooling at um, Stafford um, Technical School in um, Rutland to get certified in welding. Welding's always been a passion of mine. It's kind of been a hobby. And I'm hoping to one day have my own business. So when I want to retire from doing the quality and be my own boss, I, I don't think I'll ever fully retire. So that's kind of like hoping to have that be my career well don't for, don't forget to take that accounting course too <laughs> <laughs> samantha what kind of uh when you're doing your quality work what kind of software are you using to uh, record all your information um so we write it down on um we have a it's all paper um and then it gets scanned into our system. Um, we have a lady that um, does that, all the paperwork <clears throat> stuff. I'm just, they're just starting to show me. Um, I actually just got a promotion. Um, the beginning of this month, I'm actually now the head inspector um, on a trial basis. I have 30 days, but um, I have to say, I'm, pre I'm killing it. Like I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> <Awesome. laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Go for it, Brittany. All right. Hi, everybody. Glad to be here. Hey, Patrick and members of the State House. It's a privilege to be here. Um, wanted to give just a little bit of background. Um, college was not an option for me uh, in high school financially. Um, it just wasn't within um, within my family's financial means. Um, so from uh, after high school, you know, I was doing jobs that um, were not satisfying me and the work that I feel is my, my heart work, my soul work. Um, you know, I was doing waitressing, um, which nothing against waitressing, but it, it just, uh, it wasn't as meaningful to me as, um, what I knew, what I knew I had to share. So, uh, what ended up happening was 
I became a mother six years ago, and I decided that I wanted to fill out some financial aid to see if I was eligible to go uh, to school. Um, I wanted to show my daughter uh, that education was important and that if we wanted to do something that we loved in life, um, sometimes more times than not, you need um, either a degree or a certification of some kind to do that. So I filled out some financial aid with VSAC and um, some of the fabulous financial advisors on the team. And I was fully funded to be a full-time student at the Community College of Vermont, uh, the Upper Valley site. I'm a Thetford, Vermont resident. Um, so this was, this was huge. This was huge. Um, so a door had opened and I took that opportunity and I am going for uh, my associates in behavioral science. I'll be finishing up um, within a year's time. Mm -hmm. Um, mental health has always been something very important to me growing up in a family um, that suffered from alcoholism and addiction, as well as mental illness. Um, it's always something that has um, been important to me. Uh, so my long term goals are to finish my associate's degree in behavioral science, um, and then I would like to pursue some educational background and take those learnings into elementary school uh, here in the state of Vermont and uh, work with our youth on uh, mental illness and um, the resources available to help help children uh, cope uh, in, the, in the uncertain times that we're living in today. So that's where I'm at and uh, thank you for having me. Great. So um, I think before we continue on, I think we should introduce ourselves to you so you know what part of the state that we're all from. And so um, as we do that, we'll raise our hand so you can see us. I know it's pretty hard um, uh, on your side of the camera to, to see us. So I'm Mike Marcotte, I'm from Coventry and I chair the committee. I'm Charlie Kimball. I'm from Woodstock, and I'm the vice chair. Hi, I'm uh, Mike Nigro, and I'm from Bennington. And I'm Emma Mulvaney Stanek, and I represent a portion of Burlington. Uh, John Kosenska from Burke. Wayne Rush from Franklin. Kirk White from Bethel. And Stephanie Jerome from Brandon. And Kira. I'm Kira. I live in Burlington. I'm the committee assistant. So we, we do have a couple of committee members that aren't with us right now, but um, that's the committee. And um, I, I'm just wondering, um, the, the, the aid packages that, that you all <clears throat> applied to with VSAC, uh, you know, during the pandemic, we, we provided some monies, um, especially in the state college systems for people to take courses. Um, without have, without um, having to pay for any of it and also provided wraparound services. And I'm just wondering if, if any of you were able to access those funds. I'll go ahead yeah. and share. Is it all right to go ahead, Patrick? Sure. Okay. Um, yes, um, I was able to receive uh, some of the funding uh, during the pandemic. I was one who um, did get hit um, financially with the pandemic. I did lose my job. Um, and in the midst of taking classes, I was working on and I was um, doing all my schoolwork on an old, an old laptop of mine. And my daughter had accidentally jumped off the couch onto my computer on the floor and had shattered and packed the screen. Um, so it was completely um, not usable. Uh, so I ended up going back and forth from our local library and um, it was becoming uh, a, a big time struggle. Uh, 
So I was able to receive some funding and I was able to get a brand new laptop um, that I am very much, very much um, grateful for. And that is how, if I didn't have that, if I didn't have access to that money to get a new computer, I, I truly do believe that um, my my work definitely would have suffered. My schoolwork definitely would have suffered. And I think there would have been a spiral and who knows what would have happened. So super grateful for that funding um, and the purchase of my new computer. So thank you. Well, we're just very happy that, you know, we were able to put that funding out and, and provide that, you know, the, the courses and, and provide the, the services around that to help people, um, you know, actually find their dreams and, and, and upskill and, and be able to get good paying jobs in the end. So it's, it's all about um, making sure that Vermonters are taken care of. Amber's going to say something. Go ahead, Amber. Yeah, um, I was in the same boat. All hairdressers and massage therapists were to a halt. Yep. So I had an old laptop as well, and I was using it. I brought it down to Staples, got it redone. It was still not loading. And I reached out to Mark, and I was telling him how I was having a little bit of struggles of wondering the schedule to go to the, uh, CCV to study. And he's like, Amber, I got funding. And I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, you can get up to $700 towards a computer. I started crying. Um, yes. So I went down immediately and I got the most affordable one. And I mean, if it weren't for that, I'd still be struggling. And it was, I mean, it was a, it was so, I got to say it wasn't so easy, but it was easy. You really just had to answer your questions and say that you were in a hardship. And it was almost unbelievable. Good. That's great. <laughs> Um, for me, um, like Amber and Brittany, um, I I used a lot of that fund, a lot of those funds for a computer and monitor, um, so that I could take classes online from home. Um, and some of the the resources I used to go towards credit card debt, as the pandemic I racked up quite a bit of credit card debt, so like that money was a huge lifesaver. Um, I'm very thankful for that. So, uh, Robert, I'm wondering, you live in Lowell, you said, right? Lowell? Yeah, big city. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just wondering, what kind of internet service do you have in Lowell to make it possible to work from home? I mean, what do you, what do you got there? Um, my wife and I have New England Wireless communications. They're, they have a cell phone tower on my in-law's uh, yard on, a, on Buck Hill. So it's New England Wireless, you said? Yeah, I think they're based out of New Hampshire. Okay. Huh. But yeah, the internet's not that great up here. Sometimes I, I can't work or do homework because it's so windy or the weather is just terrible with mm -hmm. pretty often. But. Yeah. Yeah, it makes, makes broadband that much more important for, uh, yeah. Thank you. And Samantha, were you able to access any of the monies from the advancement grants to help you um, you know, go to go to Stafford for the welding programs or other programs that you're taking at the CTE. Um, I I didn't need any. Um, they offered um, when I was doing my CPT because that was all um, online. Um, I had a computer that I mean it's not the greatest, but it works, and you know I know how to use it, so that was a plus. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I didn't, I didn't need to, but I was there if I needed it, which was nice to know. So, um, 
the, the you said you were taking a welding course at Stafford. Yes. And so, um, how, is your company paying for that course or? No, I got a VSAT grant for that. So you got so you went through the advancement grants and received a grant to take that course at the CTE. Um, the CTP courses I got uh, it, I got a grant, but it wasn't through VSAC. Oh, so the welding course, Samantha, was it through VSAC? That was yes. Yeah, so that would have been an advancement grant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. So, and, and I, I'm saying CTE, so the Career Technical Education Center at Stafford. Oh, okay. Um, I, it's a little difficult sometimes to understand what we're saying with these masks on. <clears throat> and then there's the issue of your accent. That too, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's the, it's the, the uh, <laughs> Northeast Kingdom accent, probably. <laughs> I think Bob, Bobby has the same same issue, <laughs> and probably John does too. I do not. <laughs> Some of us don't have any accents. <laughs> we're, all, we're all good friends here, by the way. <laughs> well, you know, we're so close to Canada. We got that. <laughs> True. Other so, questions? Yeah. So, what is your um? The courses that you're in now, when do you see the, when you'll, your completion, I think, Brittany, you said you've got another, what, one more year until your associates, and then you're going to go on for some more certifications. But yeah, yeah, I have about another year left um, for, for the associates in behavioral science, and um, I want to continue, I want to continue. Um, I'm enjoying it so much. Uh, my high school career was not um, was not really focused on <laughs> on the uh, the classes I had better things on my agenda or so I thought <laughs> so having this opportunity now at 33 um, to to go back to school pursue a degree in something that um, means so much to me is giving me a type of hope and uh, confidence and accountability and um, worthiness that I honestly have never had in my life. I never thought, uh, I never thought this would be, this experience would be so rewarding. Um, and I never knew that I enjoyed learning so much. <laughs> um, you know, so it's just, this it's just a gift that is continuing continuing so um yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna finish up this degree and start another one and um see where it goes it's great yeah so, isn't it nice that that you don't your your path is not set when you're 18 and finish high school yes right yes yes it, it you know i think too it, coming right out of high school, um, you know, just finishing being in school for your whole life. It's, it's a lot to swallow to think, um, you know, about throwing yourself right back into it again. So I think there's a lot to be said about these, um, you know, the adult men and women going back, you know, we've had some time to experience life and experience uh, different occupations and, you um, you know, I think at least for me personally, every day I'm learning more and more about myself and my passions. Um, and, you know, it's just having the opportunity, you know, having the opportunity is makes all the difference. And that's something uh, by living in the state of Vermont that uh, that I have the privilege of doing is going back to school. So, again, just thank you so much. Yeah, I'm glad it's working out so well. And what about the uh, any of uh, Bobby or Samantha or Amber? How much longer do you have for your to continue your studies? I currently have 12 credits now. I'm taking a one credit course um, this summer for an accelerated payroll accounting class. I figured that was the best time to take a quick one credit class. 
And then I'll have three semesters or yeah, about two, two and a half semesters left. Then I'll have my con uh, complete bookkeeping certification. Mm -hmm. And that way the grants are used, um, the non-degree grants are used. I'm getting my um, certi certification, getting all those credits built up. And if I decide to go for my associates in accounting, I will do so at that time. Um, but with a full-time business and I'm being a mom and helping oh, code. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty uh, yeah. overwhelming some days. Yeah, wow. And Brittany, what about you? Do you have more, how many more classes are you taking? Not Brittany, I'm no, sorry. Uh, and Samantha. So um, I have one more um, class for the welding. Um, I was supposed to be done with it by the 4th of April, but um, I kind of had a little bump in the road. I had taken a really bad fall on the ice um, back in February and um, did kind of did some damage to my right shoulder and I'm right-handed and I weld right-handed. Yes. So, um, and it's the last class that you have to like, that class you're, you're doing your test piece that you get graded on to get your certification. So um, I decided that I was gonna wait and um, I'm actually gonna be doing that class come August. So um, I'm doing some physical therapy, getting my arm nice and strong so that when I do that test piece, I know that it's the best that I can do. Good, that's great. And Bobby, what about you? What's, how many more do you have, courses do you need to take? Um, after this semester, um, which ends in May, I have 12 more classes. Um, gonna be taking classes in the summer and the fall, and I'm due to graduate next spring from CCC. Very good. Great. Well, that's, I mean, it certainly is challenging to go, it is great to go back to school as an adult, but you have so much more to juggle when you're an adult, right? Like. Right. Families and job. work and yeah. Yeah, it's a real it's a time management skill that you're told you're learning now, isn't it? Yeah. Well congratulations. Thank you. Well it just it, it certainly takes a lot of motivation on, on your parts as well. Um to to you know either hold down a full time job, take care of a family and then go back to school as well. So our hats are off to you for sure. Um, other questions, committee? John? Bobby, uh, I have a question for you. Is there a particular area of IT that you're looking to move into once you finish your degree or are you still trying to um, you know, look at options once you're finished up? Um, I'm Looking after CCD, I'm looking to transfer to Vermont Tech's um, computer software engineering degree. Um, that area really interests me. Um, and I would either like to be like a full stack engineer, which deals with both front end and back end um, programming languages. Um, and I've reached out to Beta Technologies um, for a summer internship. Um, and I haven't heard back from them yet, but I only reached out to them the other day. Great, that sounds great. Well, good luck with that. Yes. Thank you. And I guess happy birthday a couple of days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. More questions, committee? Well, thank you um, for joining us today. Um, it really validates what we hear, um, what we hear from VZAC, um, what we hear from our state colleges, um, the needs of students, especially adult students uh, that are in your situations that that you know you you want to upgrade your skills, um, get better paying jobs, um, but you still have families to take care of. Um, you have life 
going on and you still have that motivation to to move forward so um, we really appreciate all you're doing and I'm glad you're here in Vermont I'm glad you're staying here in Vermont to to work we need that we need workforce um, and you know we're in all of the areas that, that all four of you are are uh, studying so um, keep up the good work um, and keep making us proud Thank you so much for having them. Thank you, Patrick. We really appreciate uh, you setting this up for us. Uh, again, it, it's it's very helpful for us to to be able to chat with the students, um, both in the, that are still in high school and, and the adult students that are that are out there. It's it, it's just uh, it just makes uh, helps us with our jobs, and uh, it really is satisfying for us to know that. That what we're what we're doing, what we're hearing, is actually be happening on the ground. That that people are being helped. Exactly. Thank you again. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Okay, Thank, you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Enjoy the spring weather. <laughs> it never gets here. <laughs>